Okay, so uh, basically, I've never rode a Hayabusa ever, and uh, this thing's like riding on a lazy boy sofa. That's 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 like the best way, like just your position of it. Because this bike's been lowered, it feels like it's a little more forward, um, but like lengthwise, it, it, it's so much longer. And the seat, it's got a good seat on it uh, from the factory, but it just feels like a lazy boy. And then the way that the foot pegs are, um, spikes fast. Uh, I, I don't quite think it's as fast as some of the bikes I had in first to second gear. So basically like zero to a hundred. Um, I've had some pretty badass bikes that are zero to like 60 in 2.6 seconds. But after a hundred miles an hour, I, I, I've never ridden a bike so fast, which just, I mean, you got to be careful. This isn't my bike. And uh, uh, yeah, so anyway, what we're going to do is the bike seems really, 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 really stiff in the front end. Um, I did hit a few country roads where I live. It's very rural. And you have potholes. You have rough roads. You have, I mean, combines. You have all kinds of farm equipment that just tear these roads up. Even our main roads where we come in, there's just two ways. If you get caught behind farm equipment, then uh, you're you're riding behind. Well, not one of these. I'll tell you this right now. If you if you had a, if you had a, a farm equipment implement and you had a line of ten cars behind it, you could jam this thing down about two years and just rev it to thirteen thousand RPM and pass every single one of them, and, not, and it's just not a sweat. So. Um, what, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to write down his settings um, that he has for the suspension and then that way I can document how, how it's set here but I'm going to take all of the settings back to what the factory setting is. Um, a lot of people like to mess with settings. If you bought a bike and if you bought one of these and you're like, oh, the, the suspension really tells you a lot about the owner. Not, not saying that this owner, um, I, I don't think the owners touch this but the owner that you actually buy it from. If it feels real, you know, just not right, um, more, more than likely someone's messed with it and didn't know what they was doing. So we're just, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna take this back to the factory specs and then uh, take it for a ride and see what happens because it feels really stiff. But with this Hayabusa, um, I don't know where this bike come from. He did say something about uh, online or something. I don't know if it was his friends or what it was. Um, but if this bike was like in the city and they were at group meets and you know they have nice paved roads and stuff, uh, you, you would want it super stiff in that front end because when you launch you don't want that front tire. You want as much of the spring load down on the ground. So uh, I'm just going to set it back because I know he's not a, you know a big time racer and you know ring and stuff, you know light the light. So we'll get started here and I'll kind of walk you through here. If you don't know exactly what I'm doing, I'm going to recommend a different video. That will explain the suspension to you because I can't explain it all to you like some of these other people can. Um, you just have to work with it and figure out what's going on with it. Thank you very much for any Amsoil customers. Uh, <laughs> through the links below you can get a free Amsoil catalog if you have one of these bikes and find out exactly all the fluid that works for your bike. Um, if you have a different style of bike, then you can actually click another link and you can go ahead and figure out what kind of Amsoil fluids will work for you. This bike's fast, that's all I can say. I'm actually thinking about getting one. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start on the rear end of the bike and I'm actually going to start on the bottom adjuster which is actually the rebound. Um, what it should be, it should be 12 clicks from the uh, hardest setting. So on your bike what you're going to want to do is click it all the way to the hard setting. There's a soft and a hard. And then we're going to go 12 clicks counterclockwise from the hard setting. That's the factory setting. So you're going from hard to soft and we'll count out loud what his settings are and then um, we'll set it back to the factory setting. Okay so like I said we're going to turn this up to the hop, uh, 
hard setting and each turn will be one click. You'll hear it click. And what we're going to do is we're going to get to a point where you're going to get to uh, resistance on the shock. Do not move this screw farther if you get resistance. You'll end up breaking the shock on any of these settings. So you heard a click. One, two, and this, <laughs> this bike was only set two settings off the stiffest um, suspension. So that, that kind of reiterates that I think the, the previous owner was doing really, really, really hard launches on this thing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go counterclockwise 12 uh, to the soft setting. One, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So we're going clockwise out twelve times. Counterclockwise out. Okay, and what we're going to do now is the compression on the rear shock, which is going to be eight clicks from the stiffest. So we're going to recount them to get his setting um, to the stiff and then we're going to do it eight clicks out counterclockwise and the camera I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a good shot in this okay here we go we're going to turn it in And actually, he's all the way in on the hard setting. So this is as hard as it gets on this suspension. We're going to want to go eight clicks out from the hardest suspension. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, six, seven, and eight. There's your, uh, there's your compression for the rear shock. Now your preload is done by the length of your spring. And unfortunately, I'm not taking the shock off, so we're going to leave that as it is. But the preload is actually the length of the shock will be 7.68 inches. Okay, so now we're going to move to the uh, front of the bike, and we're going to start with the compression, which is on the bottom of the fork. And we're going to turn it out until it stops. So turn it clockwise again, just like the rear, and then we're going to turn it out eight clicks to soften it up and then we'll go to the top of the bike. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it out um, to, from its stiffest setting. It's actually set to the stiffest. So we're gonna basically do it counterclockwise and we're gonna go eight out on the compression side on the bottom side here. So we're all the way in to the stiffest we didn't, and you just hear a really small click. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we'll go to the other side and do that as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe on this video so I can keep making videos.
Okay, so we're going to go to the top end here, and we're going to set the the rebound is the top screw with the little screw head, and then the preload is actually the the shaft that comes up with the grooves in it. And the one with the grooves in it, I've had some older bikes before where you go to set, try to set your preload, and it'll actually turn that rebound screw. Um, so you may have to actually put, uh, I think it's a 17 millimeter over the preload and actually hold the screw. But um, it's real important not to over tighten these um, when they bottom out or you can completely destroy your fork. So just follow this video and you shouldn't have any problems if you're going to set this back. But as you'll see um, from what I saw, it is complete, it's really stiff on the front end because he's got the preload set all the way down. And that's for launching the motorcycle, not for riding on the road. So um, it should be, it looked like it was five clicks out and there's only five grooves on the on the preload so we'll we'll get this here and get this set okay and what we're going to do is we're going to set the preload first and the preload is the shaft here with all the grooves in it and we're just going to turn this all the way in to set it back down all the way to the bottom and then the way you set it is you turn it back out counterclockwise so the preload on this bike is supposed to be three and a half turns to the standard position so you're going to come up to three lines and then be in between the the fourth line to make this three and a half and it says it'll be six complete turns out so we're going to we're going to move it back in and then move it out go ahead and get it bottomed out and just take it slow on this one like i said once you get resistance you're going to want to stop Actually, a six-point wrench would be better than um, the 12-point that I'm using. I don't know what it is. It sounds like a fucking concrete saw running all day. It started at 6 o'clock in the morning. I mean, I live on this main road. It's driving me nuts. I wanted to be out of this house by July, and that just didn't happen after I had to end up remodeling my house. But if anybody has any questions, uh, sometimes it's easier just to reach me on my email than it is to uh, leave a comment on here on YouTube. And I do not know a whole lot about these bikes. We're just kind of just doing the general maintenance on this bike and then we're, uh, you know, setting this back to the factory settings of how it would come out of the dealership. Because when I rode this on the country road, I mean it was so rough and then I rode to go get to go get some bumblebee ice cream um, and I just I couldn't believe how rough it is so we need this front suspension to work for us not to launch like we're racing okay so we're pretty much bottomed out okay and as you can see we basically bottomed out the preload adjustment and you're going to have your hard and your soft marks. Use that when you're turning it if you don't have the um, correct tool. And it says we're going to make six full rotations out to get to our three and a half line groove. So the best way to do it is to watch the middle screw and just make sure you're doing full rotations all the way around with your, uh, with your rebound screw. Or actually what you want to use, the rebound, the rebound screw won't move. We're going to actually use the, the 10 that's marked on top. And we're going, to, we're going to count the rotations by that. So we're going counterclockwise. And the 10 was in the 12 o'clock position. There's one turn. Two turns. Three turns. And it said we're going to make six turns. Four turns, going on five.
five turns. And I do want to say, um, I am not a professional at this motorcycle stuff. I'm just an amateur, but I do a lot of reading. And my dad taught me everything that I know. If you do need help, um, the best way to reach me is through my email. You can email me at torrentperformance at outlook.com. And there's 10 turns. I also am an Amsoil uh, T1 certified dealer. If you need any fluids for your bike, uh, click the links below. I'm not, I do not know a whole lot about these bikes, um, just what I've read, and these things are rocket ships, and um, I'll probably end up investing in one in the future here. But So you're six clicks out, and as you'll see the grooves, one, two, three, and we're exactly three and a half grooved out. I'll, I'll put up a little picture here. And now we're going to set our uh, rebound screw on the top and we're going to go all the way in clockwise to our stiffest setting, which is going to be hard, and then we're going to turn it out soft, I think eight clicks. We're going to go eight clicks counterclockwise from stiff and that'll be our factory setting. And then I'm going to go take this thing for another test ride. So we're going to go clockwise until we bottom out and we're going to count here how much, what his setting was. One two, three, and we're bottomed out. So he had it set three settings out from the, the hard setting. So we're going to actually go eight settings out from the hard setting. You'll hear it click. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's very important when you do this that you do both sides um, of the bike, one, one setting at a time. One, two, and that's, that's set, it was set at two, which is opposite of the other. So we're going to turn it back to the click. Because see, you, you can go a little bit, but it won't click. So once you hit that resistance, that other click is the last click. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Never force these settings inside. These are delicate pieces inside the forks. You'll end up breaking the whole fork if you, if you push it too far. Okay, and I'm going to get it off the ramp here and take it for a ride. It's kind of nice to ride something that isn't, most of the bikes I ride are so sporty that they're, they're not comfortable. This bike's reasonably comfortable. I'm going to tell you something else. This bike loads onto this ramp because it's so low. It's so easy to load on this ramp. It's unbelievable. I can already feel the suspension working. It's not, it's not compressed as much just from coming out of that wheel chalk.
camera's angled like that. Well, that's pretty much a, a night and day difference in the ride of that. So if, if your Busa is feeling a little funny, maybe you just bought it, you, you uh, might have set the suspension and thought that you knew what you was doing, but you really didn't. This is a great tutorial video to set it back to standard and restart again. The difference it made on these roads is astronomical. So I would say the previous owner, he was he was launching this thing, uh, which I, I, I'm too scared to do, but I could see you sticking it in second gear and then just just dropping that clutch and you know that front end being so stiff and that rear end just trying to keep this bike as solid as possible. But around here, if you're not doing that, man, you need that suspension to work for you when you hit potholes. Hell, I've seen about three dead raccoons on the way to uh, Taylorville. So uh, you hit a raccoon or something, you're going to want that suspension to work. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching anybody, for subscribing, uh, purchasing from the Amazon links or the uh, uh, Amazon stuff. I've got some tools listed on uh, the Amazon links. All that stuff really helps me out. And, you know, then again, hopefully th this bike's actually going to go back to its owner and hopefully come back to get the rest of the work done. I can feel that this thing needs spark plugs bad. Um, it's got a little bit of a a hop in second gear and I don't want to say too much but I, I think spark plugs and bleeding the clutch would help with that because I think the clutch friction plates um, are either wearing down or the clutch master cylinder isn't providing enough strength to get the clutch in, uh, to get the friction plates onto the clutch and that might possibly reduce the skipping that or if someone had this and was launching this like they was racing, uh, second gear might have a little bit of an issue in it. But, who the hell needs second gear on a bike like this? As long as you can keep it in second gear 2000, hit it to third. This thing revs to 14,000 RPMs. Who cares?